Hello, this is Jeffrey Frankel with Solutions in Chemistry. Today I'm going to talk about calculations in acids and bases in IB Chemistry HL Paper 1. This is Calculations 2, and you can answer these questions fast and correctly. In this particular YouTube video, I am assuming that you've seen all my other YouTube videos on acids and bases both the core material and the HL material and I'm definitely assuming that you have seen the one immediately before this the one on acids and bases and calculations number one because in that one I covered a lot of the underlying ideas behind these questions however there is some overlap between what I'm doing in this particular YouTube video and some of the earlier stuff and there may not be any new ideas in this one, however there may be new questions and so I'm showing you how you can deal with these different questions that the examiners ask because of the way they ask the question may not be the way it's written about in the textbooks or the way your teacher has spoken about it. Looking at this one I would say immediately that the pH value of the solution is 3. Now how did I get that? Well very simple. Well, very the concentration is 0 0.001. No way will it have a pH of 0 0.1. That is a very concentrated solution of a strong acid like hydrochloric acid. And this is not only a weak acid but it's and it's only 10% dissociated and it's quite a low concentration solution so no way will it have a pH of 0.1 nor will it have a pH 1 nor will it have a pH of 2 therefore I immediately go for 3 now let me tell you one or two other things that the IB really expect you to remember if you have a 0.1 mole decimeter cubed solution of HCl they expect you to remember that the pH equals 1. If you have a 0 0.01 mole decimeter cubed of HCl, they expect you to remember that the pH equals 2. And for those two reasons, it can't be 1 or 2. And therefore, it must be that. Let me do the calculation to show you how this concentration of solution and that amount of dissociation would actually produce a pH of 3. We start off with HX, as usual, goes to H plus plus X minus. And the concentration of that starts as, starts at uh, 0 0.001, that's 0, that's 0. And then after it's dissociated, it goes down to 0 0.009 and this is the 10% 0 0.001 concentration and that's 0 0.0001 concentration there you see this is this because it's 10% dissociated so that's the 10% this is the concentration of H plus concentration of H plus equals 0 0.0001 and therefore pH equals minus log H plus which equals minus the log of that which is that is 1 times 10 to the minus 3 which therefore equals 3. Using the original argument that I described whereby this is clearly a very strong acid this is a strong acid and this is a strong acid and therefore this is the only one that's a weak acid, that argument should take no more than 10 seconds. If you decided to do this calculation, okay, so it brings you up to about 30 seconds to get to this point, and then you realise that's it. But the answer is D. When you're asked to arrange things in an order, my general way of doing it is to find the first member and the last member of this order, and then see how the others fit in the middle. Well, let's look at the least acidic first. That means a low concentration of H+. And at the other end, we're looking for a high concentration of H+. H+. So that's what we're looking for. We know that the lowest value of H+, 
out of Q and S is S. S is the lowest, and we know that the lowest value of H plus out of R and P is P. So the question is, which is lower, P or S? If you antilog P that, pH equals 8, would give a concentration of H plus equals 1 times 10 to the minus 8. And just looking at it, we can see that the value of H plus is lower than that. So P is here. P is the lowest acidity. Now let's look at the high end, which has the highest value for H plus. We have seen that out of Q and S, it's Q has the highest value. And we look at these two, and we know that R has the highest value of acidity. So the question is, which has the highest value of H plus out of R and Q? And I think you can see that Q has the highest value, because Q would have a pH equals 3. That value is 3. This would have a H plus equals 1 times 10 to the minus 5. Notice I didn't change this one because of the 2. 2 times 10 to the minus 7 means for many people it would not be possible to form the log of that in the absence of a calculator. So ignore that one, just deal with that one, that one and that one. And so what we're getting is Q is the highest acidity, Q. And so it's P, one end and Q at the other end, P, one end and Q at the other end. A is the answer, without even bothering with which way S and R go. A is the answer. And in fact, if you looked at it, R is more acidic than S, because that has a H plus 10 to the minus 5, that has an H plus 10 to the minus 7. So this one can certainly be done within less than 30 seconds. They say it's a weak acid, and what is the pH of a 0.1 mole solution? Well, you can eliminate 10. It's not going to be pH 10, it's an acid. You can eliminate 7, because it's not going to be neutral, it's going to be acidic. And then this one you can eliminate. Why can you eliminate this? Because this is the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of strong acid. 0.1 mold decimeter cubed HCl has a pH equals 1. But they're saying it's not a strong acid. They're saying it's a weak acid with a acid dissociation constant of 10 to the minus 3. Therefore, the answer is C. You can do that within 10 seconds. Let me do the calculation to prove that the answer is C. We start off with Hx goes to H plus plus X minus and Ka equals H plus concentration X minus concentration of Hx. Now the reality is you wouldn't do this calculation in paper 1, but you might be asked to do it in paper 2. So let's go through it. We know the acid dissociation constant, which is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 5, equals Hx. We know the concentration of the Acid is 0.1, so we put that down there. Now, the interesting thing about this is if there's a, a particular concentration of H+, there is exactly the same concentration of X-. minus. Therefore, we can put this here, H plus squared, because we're saying that the concentration of H plus equals the concentration of X-. minus. Therefore, we can do that. Therefore, we can say h plus squared equals 1 times 10 to the minus 6. Sorry, squared. h plus equals 1 times 10 to the minus 3. And the pH equals 3. Why does the pH equal 3? Because the pH equals minus log h plus. So, the calculation gives you that. Now, I don't know how long that calculation would take you in an exam, 
But it's not necessary because, as I said, that's an alkali, that's a neutral, and that's a very strong acid, not a weak acid. Therefore, it leaves you with C. So let's look at this one. It's hydrochloric acid and ethanoic acid. Now we know hydrochloric acid is strong, meaning it's completely dissociated, and ethanoic acid is a weak acid, meaning it is only partially dissociated. They are the same concentrations. Which method could not be used to tell them apart? Comparing the electrical conductivity of solutions, yes, that is a way to tell them apart, because electrical conductivity of the hydrochloric acid, being a strong acid, will be higher than that for ethanoic acid. Comparing the reading they give on a pH meter, again, because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and is completely dissociated, then the reading on the pH meter will clearly be different ethanoic acid. The hydrochloric acid will have a low pH and the ethanoic acid will have a higher pH. Comparing the volume of sodium hydroxide solution required in neutralization. Now, in this case, we cannot tell them apart because a given molar quantity of hydrochloric acid will need the same quantity of sodium hydroxide as the same molar quantity of ethanoic acid. So, you cannot use the volume of a sodium hydroxide solution that is required for neutralization to tell them apart. So the answer is C. And let's look at D. D is the unusual one. Adding an equal volume of one mole of sodium hydroxide solution and comparing the pH values of the solution's form. Now in this case, you can tell them apart because if you add an equal volume of sodium hydroxide solution to your hydrochloric acid, you get sodium chloride, which is neutral. It has a pH of 7. If you add an equal volume of sodium hydroxide solution to ethanoic acid, you get an alkaline solution because you're mixing a weak acid and a strong alkali and in equimolar quantities that will have a pH higher than 7, 9, 10 or thereabouts. So, adding an equal volume of sodium hydroxide solution and comparing the pH values is a method which can tell them apart. So the method which cannot be used to tell them apart is C, comparing the volume of sodium hydroxide solution required for neutralization. This is exactly the same question as the previous one, except instead of using a strong acid and a weak acid, we're using a strong base and a weak base. And the answers are the same. If you compare electrical conductivity, you can tell them apart. Electrical conductivity will be different. Comparing the reading they give on the pH meter, they will give different readings on a pH meter. Comparing the volume of hydrochloric acid required for neutralization, they require the same volume. So this cannot be used to tell them apart. Adding an equal volume of one molar decimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid and comparing the pH values of the solutions formed. As I explained in the previous exercise, by adding hydrochloric acid to sodium hydroxide, you're creating sodium chloride, and therefore that is neutral, pH equals 7. Whereas if you're adding hydrochloric acid to ammonia, you're creating ammonium chloride, which is acidic. And so comparing the pH values will tell them apart. So the answer in this case is C. When you compare the volume of hydrochloric acid required for neutralization, cannot tell them apart whether it's a strong base or a weak base. I hope you find that this one is an easy one. 10 centimeters cubed of an HCl solution has a pH of 2. It's then mixed with 90 centimeters cubed of water. In other words, it's diluted 10 times. What will the pH of the resulting solution be? Clearly it will be 3. It's B. If you dilute something 10 times, then the pH in the case of an acid, increases by one unit. As I said, the answer is B. This is very similar to the previous question, except it's in the opposite direction. The pH has changed from 2 to 5. What happens to the concentration? We know if it goes from 2 to 3, it's 10 times dilution. 3 to 4, it's another 10 times dilution. 4 to 5, it's another 10 times dilution. So we get a thousand times dilution. We know that in 
changing from pH 2 to pH 5 it is being diluted so the concentration is decreased by a factor of a thousand. These questions that I've just been doing are questions that you can do in 10 seconds. Take advantage of these simple questions. Do them in 10 seconds so that you have extra time for the other questions which may be more complex. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please subscribe to my channel, Solutions in Chemistry, and look at my other videos. Thank you.